on you guys, it's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 1 reaction video. Today I'm bringing you guys the uh, Chaos Reigns Combat cast, man. I did mention in my last video um, that I would be at work when this was happening, and of course that was the case. So obviously I didn't watch it, I just let it, you know, go on as it as it did, and then, uh, you know, waited till I got home to actually record it. Uh, also, I did get age restricted on my uh, my um, last video, which was my uh, Chaos Range official trailer reveal. Um, it, like the second I put it up, it was like instantly age restricted. So I don't know. I might have to delete that and then maybe re-upload. I, ha I have no clue. Don't know why. Um, it's probably because I said maybe a curse word super early into the video. I don't know. You know how YouTube is. Uh, because I've, I posted a lot of, M you know, half my damn channel is MK. So, of course, you're going to see a lot of uh, blood and gore. So, I, I don't know what would have caused the uh, age restrictions to trigger. But, um, but enough of that. We're going to be watching this, man. This is an hour, basically an hour long, man. So, looks like we're going to be getting a lot more than just noob sidebot gameplay and uh, other things. But, just from like little preview I see here. Uh, oh, pardon me. Uh, I am they're showing off some stuff. So, let's do it, man. Let's do it. So... Like, comment, and subscribe, man. Let's get into this, you know? Let's get into this. I do apologize. I just got home from work, so I'm a little tired. <laughs> but, you know, I'm finally home, so I'm just resting. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, just a skosh. Perfect. Combat cast starts now. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the combat cast for Chaos Rain. It's coming very, very soon. Tyler, very Derek, and this. Stephanie. Rain, not drizzles. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be pouring down on you. It's gonna be great. Uh, today we're gonna talk about a lot of things that are coming with Chaos Rain that we have not talked about. We're gonna talk about some new balance stuff. We have a few interviews with some people from the studio about <laughs> Can she nerf? Can she nerf? I'm manifesting that. <laughs> Every aspect of the game has something fresh and new and exciting. It's a really, really exciting expansion. Yes, and we're going to try to get to, to a lot of that today. Uh, as you know, most of you, hopefully, the Noob Cybot trailer came out last week. And we would like to just, in case you haven't seen it, you live under a rock, show it one more time. Under the sea. Oh, we're just going to skip that because we've already seen it. We've already seen it. Go. All right, now we gotta find out who the tiger is. <laughs> there he is, Noob Cybot. What a fun trailer. Uh, Super goth. Very goth, cool character. Very edgy. Edgelord. Real mad, too. Angry. Very fun. I've been, I've been messing around with them. Enjoyable. Super, I'm just the, the crazy portal. <laughs> nice that you could play him, man. He's a developer, you can, can do that. During the walkthrough. Is Derek rocking the Jordans? What the hell? So things, oh, God, things yeah. gonna happen. So that's, that's my I don't opinion. think I've owned a pair of Jordans in like, uh, 15 years, dude. Alright, let me take that back like 10 years. No. Actually, yeah, maybe 15 years. It's, <laughs> it's 2024, man. Goddamn. Pretty sure I was like in elementary school like 15 years ago. Maybe sort of. I hope. Classic <laughs> fatality. Because me, I like the animality. It's just like a classic throwback to noobs. Uh, fatality from MK9. Like, make a wish. Make a wish. Make a wish, but with. Oh, I did it. Yep. Oh, I love it. I love it. We call that the Florida <laughs> special. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's always got his good friend with him in the shadow. Him in the shadow, absolutely. So we have a lot of stuff to go over today, and yeah. uh, DK, this is this is gonna be the the, the DK time segment. segment. Yeah, segment. You got a lot through. of talk in here. We got All right, this talk. must be some sort of invasion. So here we go. Let's go ahead and start that out. Okay, terrific. So we've got a new season of invasion. Season 8. Uh, it is the season of the Dark Dragon. Um, Liu Kang. Kang is the invading, uh, invading force. And he's gone. I'm just going to pause it right now. I love Liu Kang's Order of Darkness skin. It's like, it's like one of my favorite skins for him in the game. It's uh, it's really sick. It's really sick. I was still hoping for a Katana Time battle, though. <laughs> Mad with power. Oh! So ooh, ooh. Yo, that looks so... Dude, these are like the Kronika skins. 
Dude, these are what the Chrono Kiss skins from MK11. Holy shit. That's so sick. Katana, Scorpion, Melina, and... Goddamn, how many fucking times is Melina gonna get fucking skin for that goddamn... Or color color for that skin there. Uh, Sub-Zero again. But, yo, it's it's like the fucking, um... It's like the MK11 Chronica skins. That's really sick. But it's not Chronica, it's, uh, it's Liu Kang. And it looks like he has, like, a little... Like, because in his normal Order of Darkness skin, he doesn't have, like, this shit. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they look like time constructs. I fuck with that heavy. Of course, thank you. Katana got another color palette for that. And it looks like a new... Is that a new mask, or... I don't know. I don't think so. But let's keep going. But it's army of constructs with it to take away yep. this timeline. And so this is just kind of an constructs, man. Let's go. Right. That you will unlock through, you know, playing the season of uh, invasions along with what will be in the seasonal shop. Um, and we have more about. Did they actually put shit in the season seasonal shop? Because, like the last two seasons, man, they've been very, 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 very stingy with what the hell they were giving out, man. Like, almost every character except for, like, five only got, uh, like, their wep- like, their gear items, like, their weapons or masks and shit like that. And then, like, Scorpion and Sub-Zero got a- a, um, an actual skin, so... Hopefully, I mean, come on, they've had since- like, it's been, like, what? Since... Homelander? Dropped? No, since Takeda dropped that, they could, like, finally put skins in the fucking seasonal shop. That would be really nice. Uh, and obviously more stuff for the shrine, you know? Uh, cause there's- I would love to get, uh, Raiden's, uh, Wuxi Shaolin skin. That'd be so sick. Because, if you didn't know, if you played the, uh, seasonal tower for invasions, and if you went to level 80, you're able to get Kung Lao's and Johnny's, uh, like, Shaolin Monk skin, which was pretty fucking sick. I would love to have gotten that for Johnny, but, uh, no. Uh, so hopefully, praying that they put, uh, Kung La, uh, not Kung La, Raiden's in the, uh, like, shrine or something like that, because that was, like, Raiden and Kenshi should be in the shrine. That'd be really cool. Uh, they're not going to, but that would be really cool. Seasonal shop, but we'll get to that later. Sure. Um, also, this season, we have new mini games. We have things called Arc Cage. Which are uh, okay. that you beat up. Uh, some of them have a little bit of chaos going on, but you'll uh, you'll be rewarded currency, so coins, crowns, or seasonal currency. Ooh, we also okay. Have missions where you have to protect a cashew. Okay. Oh, there, that's my favorite. There are zombies Ooh, after cashew, and cashew. you gotta keep you gotta keep them safe. Okay. Oh, cashew's uh, a fucking squirrel that's on the uh, Roomba. That's right. We have a mini map for each one of the mesas that really points out. Finally, they're adding that, man. You don't know how fucking annoying that was. Not having like an actual mini map to like guide you where the hell you're going. That's so fucking good. That should have been like season fucking one, dude. I don't know why it took them so long to, to like finally do that. It's crazy now that we're on season eight, man. Like it's been a year since MK1 came out. Kind of insane. Almost a year, right? No, it has been a full year, I think. Yes, finally. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> we also have dedicated shops that sell components. Um, Ooh, finally. I heard some feedback from the previous season that people really want to be able to target uh, being able to get components. So we made sure that some of the larger mesas have uh, dedicated component shops so for people to go and find and explore. Ooh, um, that would be nice because... There's times where I try to go like get the keys, the skeleton keys for the cases or for the uh, the chests, and I run into a collector that's selling fucking uh, you know, the talismans. It's like, come on, man, I don't, I don't need that shit. <laughs> we have a new titan, um, which I'm very excited for. What's her name? It's pretty big. Who is it? Very big. It's pretty big. Um, and of course, we will have the free trial powers for Sector Cyrax and Noob. So if you haven't had the chance to pick them up yet, you will be able. Be ready for some more new stuff. A lot of new stuff. What? Of course. That's what we're here for. So, we will be having online practice as well. Online hey, practice. let's go. Update for everybody. Uh, just so that you're aware, go out there, go spar with your friends, send them an invite. You guys can just do a little practicing against each other online, and that will be available, of course, with this update as you well. Could play nice. Lose, and instead of complaining on social media. That's actually really cool because uh, um, I just legit lost my train of thought. 
about the uh, online practice mode. So let me just keep going. Work with them to improve. Or you may just want to spar with a friend. You could also do both. What? Well, nice. Complain on social media and then also try to get better. All these, Absolutely. All these things are options. Absolutely. And then uh, we're going to start going over some... Uh, I was going to say something. I just completely and forgot now. With this update. But first, we're going to start with animalities. Hey. If you're unaware, just for getting the update of Chaos Rings, everybody gets access to the new animal. That's for the base roster characters, along with the DLC characters. Ooh. I can't wait to see. Oh. Well, you know, they're guest characters. Of course they will. Thank you. I was about to say, let's go, bro. There's some rippers. There's some good I can't wait to see Omni-Man's, bro. Omni-Man's right top of Anaheim's going to be sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Real good. No, they are awesome, but like I said, If Peacemaker doesn't turn into an eagle, it's that they 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 fucked up already. Those are free for everybody, and we'll go over some more free stuff here in a minute. And remember, when that drops, I will be doing a video of me reacting to all of them, so be prepared for that. I think uh, we've got... Yeah, we, we do have an uh, interview I did earlier with Josh Slingerland about animalities that we're going to show you right now. All I'll right talk about animalities. Let's go. Here on the cast. Right here. Who do we have with us? Hey, guys. Uh, Josh Slingerland, um, principal artist here at NetherRealm, and... God damn it. Um, my job is directing all of the real-time cinematics here. So today, we're going to talk just briefly about what has returned to Mortal Kombat 1, Animalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, we are so excited to talk about this feature. Um, we've been working on this for months and months and months. And, uh, More like years. <laughs> cool to finally get it out there and, right. uh, um, and, and starting to see some of the reactions. Uh, to some of the small clips we've uh, kind of already put out there already. There are a lot of animalities. Uh, a lot, man. Let's talk about, like, what what was sort of the decision? Like, what, why, why bring back animalities? Uh, yeah, so uh, animalities, we've been talking about bringing back for a little while now. Um, as I'm sure most of uh, you fans know, um, we brought back, I think, every finisher now at this point. We've, we brought back uh, the fatalities. We brought back the brutalities. We brought back friendships last game. Now, Mercy. I believe Animality is the only one that we haven't uh, brought back. There's yeah, gonna be a, there's gonna be a lore head who proves us wrong there, but hey, we're sticking with it right now. I'm always I'm usually wrong. So okay. anyways, um, uh, it's 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 time, you know, like uh, it's it's been since MK3. Um, been a long, long time. Since that game. Okay, right. Um, and um, it, it's 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 just so cool uh, to bring this back, you know. Next gen graphics, new engine, um, things are looking hot, and uh, I couldn't be more pleased with what the team has kind of done with this feature so far. So, what's your favorite part about it all? Just um, the nostalgia? What, like, what, 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 what are you excited about? All of the above. It? It's, 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 you know, like uh, it, it's a refreshing, um, you know, creative kind of uh, endeavor for everybody on the team um, to, you know, come up with. What is uh, every character, what are they going to transform into? Let's make sure it fits their character. Um, what are they going to do once they've transformed into that animal? Um, and, 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 and we took, kind of took it from there. So. Yeah. So I guess that also probably brought up a lot of challenges. Like, what, what if you could sure. figure out what, what kind of challenges we were really present here with bringing back animals? Uh, a lot of fun challenges. Um, again, it was, you know, it's... it's we're breaking, making all these animals from scratch, mm -hmm. um, and they look gorgeous, by the way. Um, I'm really excited for you guys to see all of them. Um, the, you know, the, making sure like the fur on some of our uh, furrier guys looks really good in our engine. Uh, that was something new that we had to kind of like, you know, dig deep into. Um, and 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 then just kind of coming up with, you know, wow, it's it's, it's not the character killing them, it's it's the animal that's killing right. them, and, and, and making sure that things feel authentic and. And, and but also unique from every other character. Sound good. Uh, do you have of all the animalities that are in this game? Do you have a favorite? I knew this was going to come up. I, I I don't have a favorite. Uh, there are. I so created many, them. Uh, so many <laughs> great ones. But I do want to say this. Um, I can't leave here empty-handed. Um, They're going to show us an animality. Bring a little uh, clip. I'd like to share. Let's go. Uh, I've been meaning. Okay, okay. So, We're gonna get Takeda's uh, animality? What the why, fuck? Why don't we show uh, why don't we show his animality? So uh Okay world premiere Hey first DLC uh, character to show off their animality. Uh, animality that uh, um, no one's seen yet. So. Well, 
thank you, Josh, for coming by. Yeah, it's buddy. been awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, great to have you. And here we go. The world premiere of Cicada's Animality. Enjoy, guys. Let's go. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> He's a fucking octopus? Oh my god. What? That was sick, dude. Fucking Takeda turns on octopus. That's so. That makes sense because of his uh, his whips. That's so cool. That's actually really fucking cool. I like that. That was also a really cool transformation. Like, he jumps into like a pool of water, and all of a sudden, like, the fucking like a hole just comes out of nowhere. Like, a tentacle. That's actually really fucking cool. Thank you, Josh. That was awesome. By to talk about animality is Madera. Yay! I'm back. Let's talk about what what else we have coming. Sure, 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 sure. There's more. How is that possible? I know. All right, so. Yeah, Takeda's animality was pretty cool. I like that. The warrior shrine is, and what the warrior shrine is is it highlights the. I I did see this on Twitter, and man, I could tell you it's probably one of the lamest fucking things ever. So uh, let me just go back and just pay attention. What the warrior shrine is, and what the warrior shrine is is it highlights the top five players of Combat League every season. And so what you'll be able to do is scroll through all the previous seasons and see who were the top five players of each season. I know it's amazing. In season three, myself, Stephanie, Dizzy, Nicastro, and Paulo were able to be the top five players. Yeah, we're I very, know. very strong. Yeah, yeah. It, we were amazing. Right. Um, all that speculating, wondering of what the hell the Warrior Shrine is going to be. And it just turned out to be this. What a fucking disappointment, dude. <laughs> what an absolute disappointment. I mean, it's I guess it's kind of cool, but the big the, like the, the the real thing is like who gives a shit, you know? I don't give a fuck if some dude is number one in the world three seasons ago. Like I, I kind of I mean it's kind of cool, I guess in a way, because it kind of keeps your name like immortalized in the game, you know, for however long this game's gonna run until like the next game you know you go back here and you just like let me you just hop on the warrior shrine like oh man season three this guy was the best player in the fucking game you know rocking uh <laughs> rocking baraka striker you know <laughs> but yeah the warrior shrine man all that speculating for trash in my opinion i think i think everybody can agree from what i saw on twitter that it was just that was it that that's what we waited the war for so long for that's, you know that's a lie we just kind of mocked this up just to kind of but you know what are you gonna do i just barely missed it. you did you just barely missed it but, very but, cool you can see the art there attribute to my opinion one of the coolest stages in mk history right so the warrior shrine those top five players will be immortalized in mortal kombat one with the warrior shrine there's more mm -hmm. okay so we'll go from one shrine to another so the shrine, um, also not the warrior shrine, the dragon, the dra one. <laughs> dragon fire shrine, spitting yeah. dragon shrine, uh, will be updated with new cameo brutalities for all the cameos. So you just ooh, we're getting new brutalities for cameos. Let's fucking go! Uh, please give Shujinko one. <laughs> Wasn't I just talking about this too? Like how it would be cool if Shujinko was able to use other characters' brutalities. Um, obviously it's not that, it's all the cameos are getting new brutalities, man, that'd be pretty cool. Hopefully some new skins as well, because we did catch a glimpse of Chaos Frost, so that'd be pretty cool to get that. I'd like to make a video on that. <laughs> Rocking uh, Chaos Katana and Chaos Frost on that, that'd be, that'd be really cool. But, uh, sick, man, that's so sick. We're getting cameo, br more cameo brutalities, because they only have two. They have, like, one from the throw and then one from, like, one special move, so... They're going to be getting one out, maybe one or two more brutalities, uh, depending on the cameo. So sick. That's actually really sick. Let's go ahead and so go to the shrine, throw some coins in there and get some new cameo brutalities. Nice. I'm going to tell you the seasonal store. The seasonal store now has new brutalities for all characters. Ooh, oh, characters. there's two per character. Okay. Okay. Okay, it depends on how they how much they cost though, I guess. I mean you're gonna be playing throughout the season and they give you coins. Okay, okay, okay. 
So it's like what they did in MK11 throughout the that game's lifespan of where like every update they gave all the entire cast like a brand like like one or two like brand new uh, brutalities, um, which is pretty cool. So it, I think it's kind of cool here to where now you can just buy the brutalities for your main, you know, or like for like the maybe the set of characters you play for. For me, you know, I play Katana, Ashra, and Liu Kang. Uh, Grant, I haven't played Luke Kang in a hot minute, um, and I could just uh, say, okay, I get I get enough coins, and I just buy their brutalities. So they're getting basically brand, two brand new brutalities. Okay, so that's that's pretty that's pretty interesting, man. Because I think that's something that I've wanted for a while now was uh, new brutalities. So it's nice that they're finally doing that. Because again, they did that in MK11, where like almost every update they were giving us brand new brutalities, man. Uh, especially it was actually not. I think it's actually better here. Than it is in uh, MK11 because I think for MK11 in order to get brutalities, you needed to obviously, um, you know, uh, how the fuck did you get brutalities in the game? Oh, it was the they you didn't level your character up specifically. It was through the uh, the TOT, the Tower of Time. That was like your level up. That's how you got new brutalities, if I remember correctly, for your character. And um, and the way to get brutalities in that game was to play combat league. Essentially, you know, you do, you say you hit like five, you say you hit fifteen fatal blows, and it gives you brutality for like Jade or somebody like that. Now here, it's basically go to seasonal store, buy it for your main, and test them out. You know, which that's pretty cool. Um, and they're gonna be there forever. So usually with our seasonal store, it kind of resets you know, yeah, roll around, the yeah. seasons and stuff like that. These will always be. So when we go into another season, so they are permanent. That's pretty cool. Forever there for you to be able to unlock it, so you don't feel pressured like, oh, I gotta get all of these this season. Also, all characters will get a seasonal pallet this season through the seasonal shop, along with gear. So okay. There's more things in the seasonal shop this season. Than the last two seasons. Yes. You thought we were done. I didn't. I, I, no, I, we're not done. I wrote the ah. script. I, I know it's coming next. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Fair enough. So also with just updating to Chaos Reigns, everybody will get four new environments. Those four new environments also have two variations to each one of the environments, kind of like what? a day-night sort of cycle. In addition to that, everybody will get five new stage uh, variations too. So like the oh ones. okay okay okay. So I I don't know what the I, I when he said everybody I thought he was talking about the cast. It's essentially all the stages get like a day and night cycle, so you can pick like. Johnny's Mansion has like two. He had like the day version and then the night version. And there's probably gonna be one where it's like in like midday or you know like early dawn or something like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. G Academy now has a different sort of uh, chaos like themed variation that everybody will get. Sindel's throne room. Okay, so it's like uh, what they did for Christmas and Halloween. Uh, Johnny got like a haunted mansion and then the uh, what's it called? Got like a Christmas tree wonderland one. Has I the gateway. You know, before we get to that, we did an interview today with Corey what? Uh, from the environment team about the new stages, and I think we should take a look at that video right now. All right, now we have a special interview with my friend. Yes, I like to make the friends. Yeah, I like to, I like to hear that. Uh, we're going to talk about stages today. Can you introduce yourself before we do? Uh, yeah, I'm Corey Billet. I'm on the environment team here at NRS. Awesome. And you and your team had a hand in building all of these stages out. Yeah, a lot of people have worked very hard to kind of make new uh, things for fans to get to experience four stages to do uh, violence and destruction in front of. Excellent. Uh, so we've now entered our chaos era. Mm -hmm. um, what? How did you and the team imprint Havoc's personality onto a lot of these new stages? Uh, well, so for the new era for Liu Kang, we got to kind of do the more tranquil, beautiful spaces. Uh, Havoc doesn't really follow that mindset. He's a little bit more destructive and violent, so we got to play on some of those aspects for the new stages, kind of embracing more of that gritty MK vibe a little bit more, and definitely playing with uh, you know physics in interesting ways, cosmic colors and stuff, because it's not Earth Realm as we know it, it's a different space entirely, so we really tried to push that, and hopefully it's it's clearly recognizable in the stuff we did. Well, let's do that. Let, you sure. brought along some, some kind of stage pans. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with the Chaos Seam, if you could kind of go through sort of what that all represents. Sure. So, Chaosium is a Chaosium. Where 
Havoc. That's pretty cool. Chaos and Coliseum. Okay. Performing murder games kind of 24 7, uh, doing violence on people both willing and not willing. Uh, this is just a, like I said, it's just a, a space where he kind of runs his games from up the top of the throne you see him there. So there's a ton of like, uh, when you're actually fighting in here, there's a ton of just animations and activity going on. It's just a very intense space. Awesome. Well, that's a great one. Oh, that's beautiful. Like some different colors we've used, some different mm -hmm. palettes, sort of. Yeah, very yeah. colorful skies and everything. Else, right. But that's that's pretty obvious. Really it's cool. Different. But also, still, like you said earlier. Well, like, to be fair, you're in fucking space, so you're gonna be seeing a lot of galaxies and nebulas. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we we did the beautiful side. Now we kind of want to do a little bit more of the gritty, violent MK side. And as an artist, that's probably fun too, because oh yeah, you did all the be like the beautiful. Flowers. And that might appeal to the more MKX fans, because you know, then they love that gritty, like darker looking stages. So these new chaos maps might be pretty sick for them. Who knows? Sure. What has been your favorite uh, part of the new stage for working on it? Um, I think just the ability to do interesting and weird things. Um, again, being it is like our chaos timeline, we can play with physics, we can play with things in an interesting way. We pushed NPCs and just kind of the lifeliness of things. Like Tea House, for example, was a stage with a lot going on. Chaos Neum that we just looked at is another one where there's just going to be a lot going on. Right. We push that in all of the new stages. And, and that's one of the things that I've always liked with stages, too, is that they do, they have a life. They yeah. are a character, almost. Hopefully, there's, there's, if we did our job, yeah. Right, Hopefully. there's things happening in the background. Like, what are they, what are they doing? What are they, are they exactly, they're yeah. buying food. What's going on? They're mm -hmm. having fun. Yeah. I enjoy that. Uh, real quick, in addition to the new stage, uh, stages, what else should fans be looking for in what you've created? Uh, outside the totally new stages, we also have the opportunity, obviously, to kind of being we revisit in our story some of the, the stages fans might know well. We got the ability to do fresh takes and remixes on those, kind of showing what happens when Havoc enters the scene. Mm -hmm. So I know we have like Fire Temple, uh, that is the seat of Liu Kang's power. Uh, we get to then see kind of what Havoc does when he enters the neighborhood and he essentially spits on you know Liu Kang's front door. He he makes it his own and it is no longer the same place. It's not tranquil anymore. Havoc has brought his uh, mentality, and it's just chaotic firestorms, and, and again, they've got an affront to the king as the god of Earth. Awesome. That looks cool. And, and if you it, like again, fire, it's cool. Yeah, and it's opposite of what we saw earlier. Yes. I mean, previously in MK1. Mm -hmm. uh, we got one more stage. Uh, first of all, anything you'd like to say before we, or we're going to show one more stage and then sign off um, with this interview? But. Before we show the last one, just want to say thank you to the fans. Um, there's been a lot of just really positive feedback for stages and in a fighting game that's totally not expected because the characters are and should be the focus but we've seen just the appreciation for the work in the stages and that's really awesome to see so just thank you for that and we're very excited for fans to see what we did and there's a lot of really cool stuff it's, we, there's a few things we we're not going to be showing today yeah we're there's not, plenty of secrets still to look at when you get the game for yourself right so let's before we go let's take a look at the uh at havoc citadel yeah, so for Havoc Citadel, this is a kind of endless void of winding pathways, all disintegrating and kind of tearing apart in various ways. And this just really, I think, shows some of the physics stuff I mentioned earlier, where we get to mess with things in a way that don't feel like Earth realm. That's a pretty cool looking stage, man. Stuff going on cool color changes. Yes, yeah. and I give huge props to the team because this is one where it's inherently chaotic and just a ton of winding pathways, and it can be hard to make that composed. But I think they really did a great job of making something feel composed and intentional. For something that is just so random and chaotic. That's that's in, that's an interesting quote. Uh, in t intention behind chaos. Yeah, finding the intention behind chaos. Right. Like that, that's <laughs> yeah. difficult. It is extremely difficult, and a lot of very talented people spend a lot of time trying to put a, just a little bit of that in there. So hopefully it's reflected. Make it make sense. Yeah, so. exactly. As much well, as it's Corey, thanks so much for joining yeah, us. Of course, uh, thank these you. stages, of course, are coming in Mortal Kombat yes. One. Yes. And back to the stream. Awesome, thank you, Corey, for that. It was awesome to see the overview of the stages and just, now again, that wasn't all of them, but I just wanted to kind of show you what they're thinking about, how they inject and imprint Havoc's personality onto these Chaos. Yeah, it's a is, really cool aesthetic for these new stages. Yeah, they look really cool. Uh, before we move on to some balance stuff that I want to talk about, which I know you're all very excited about, and then of course Noob, uh, DK, there's one more big thing we want to talk about that's coming with Chaos Rays. Yes, so we've got just said one more thing. We do have one more thing. All right. So for Chaos Reigns, I'm going to read from a piece of paper. I hope everybody's all right with that. You know, uh, For Chaos Reigns, we have removed the Gateway Mesa, and we have replaced it with the new Towers of Time. Hey. Towers of Time is also accessible from the main menu. Um, so Ooh. Towers of Time is a combination of the Gateway Mesa 
and the MK11 Powers of Time experience. Nice. So this is what we saw in the uh, in the Chaos Range trailer. So essentially, what it was was a was, um, was uh, Towers of Time. Essentially, it was great. Loved it. Hopefully, I can use my AI <laughs> to level up my uh, <laughs> uh, some of these characters. There are nine towers that are always available to the player. The front three towers are persistent towers. The first tower is the arcade tower with no modifiers and players can unlock ladder endings and they're just quick matches with ladder endings. The second tower is our seasonal tower. Same as what we've had in the gateway with previ previous seasons of invasions. The seasonal tower gets progressively more difficult after each completion and players unlock seasonal exclusive cosmetics after each like milestone level, basically every five completions. The third tower is the legacy tower. Legacy. After each completion, players will unlock unobtainable pallets from previous seasons of invasions. With later updates, we'll continue to add additional cosmetics. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's 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 kind of like um. It, wait, hold on. Is it going to be pallets for every character, or is it going to be only the Combat League pallets for those characters that you got from Combat League? Because that's essentially what it was in, M in uh, MK11, where if you were in the Towers of Time and you waited to, like, I think two, it was, like, it was like every two hours a meteorite would go down across the screen. You had to input a code, and then, like, a tower would pop up, and that's how you got a basically a free uh, Combat League skin. Like, set up for, like, an hour, I believe. And um, it was for just any random season that just had that uh, that happened, you know. So I wonder if that's what this is essentially. But instead of having to input a special code, it's just going to be there permanently. I'm assuming. And then it says here spend twenty five hundred crowns. So basically, your your uh, what you get from um, invasions, and then you fight whoever the tower belongs to and then you get the skin for like Natara or something like that. Cosmetic items to that loot pool. The middle row of towers is a series series of procedurally generated towers that change every hour. The tower difficulty range from very easy to very hard going from left to right. The final back row of towers is dedicated to our live content. When we go live on the 24th, You'll be able to play the character demo towers for Sector, Cyrax, and New. So if you haven't purchased them yet, you can try them out in the Towers of Time. There's exclusive player module pieces for completing the demo towers for each of those characters. Anytime we have a live event or holiday event, it will populate this back row. Now, let's dig a little deeper. When you press the Start button, this will bring up the Towers of Time menu. There are three what the hell is that Melina power? Do you see this right here? What the hell? Okay, so this is essentially what MK11 had with the daily challenges. And it looks like it's the same exact thing. And it's also, yeah, it's, it's the daily challenges, but it's for only Towers of Time only. So you could get these, uh, you know, you get coin, you get your dragon crystals, uh, some tal or like a, a relic, and then some like uh, a consumable. Ooh, hold on, look at this real quick. This is Kenshi's uh, Wushi Academy skin. That's pretty sick. Okay, let's keep going. I, I, I need to see this Molina skin, though. <laughs> that looks fucking insane. Challenges. Each challenge rewards points. All challenges must be completed in time. Oh, they're bringing this back. Okay, so yeah, back in MK11, they would have a special color palette for, say, like, Katana. That you can only get through this, through this uh, tower, the the TLT ranking, and I remember I grinded for I think it was Scarlet, it was for UMK3 Scarlet, uh, her outfit, and you had to be like top five to get one like the to, well it was top it had both pallets here, but in order to get both pallets you had to be top five, and I remember I grinded that shit to top five. Um, so that they're bringing that back, okay. Okay, so basically when the, was it the month or was it the week? It looks like it's the, the month. I thought it was the week. But whenever the month ends, uh, if you're 
say, placed in top 25, you're going to get this Kenshi palette, but you won't get the Molina or Garrus palette. You had to be in top 5 or top 10. Okay, so they're bringing that back from MK11. I'm pretty sure Derek's going to just say that right now, but, you know, it's kind of a little heads up here. Just to, They're basically bringing this back from MK11, which is pretty cool. I did like that. Environment. Once an easier hard challenge is completed, it is replaced with a new challenge. In addition to points, easy and hard challenges reward different crafting components, consumables, or relics. That brings us to the weekly challenge. The weekly challenge rewards dragon crystals. The weekly challenge can only be completed once per week. The weekly challenge also rewards a generous amount of Towers of Time points. What do these points do, you might ask? I was gonna ask. I know. These points contribute to a bi-weekly player versus player competition Oh, bi-weekly, so it's every two weeks, okay. Towers of I don't know what made me think a month, but I saw the 13 days, but yeah, that makes sense, it's bi-weekly. Once the timer runs out, players are rewarded items based on their final placement, and a new competition begins. <sighs> Fine. Very exciting. Yeah, we already had that MK11, so nice of that nice that they bring that back. Only challenges will be rewarding points, but very soon we're going to be adding points to towers. So the harder the tower, the more the points that you'll receive upon completion. We just really want to massage the numbers and things like that before we, you know, push it out to the to everybody. Right. So there, there it is. Nice job. Cool. Yeah. So they're bringing that from MK11. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's from MK11. I just learned how to read. Probably true. So anyway, thank you, Derek. That's yep. the awesome uh, Towers of Time returning to, uh, for uh, Chaos Rings. Chaos Rings, yeah. Exciting. Uh, we now, some more exciting stuff to talk about. More exciting stuff. We are going to talk about some, uh, I got a, 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 quite a few little balance things we want to talk about that I think you'll all really enjoy. Uh, again, we're not going to go through everything in the balance today because there's a lot of stuff coming. Where are the patch notes? 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 Are the patch notes? They will be coming. Uh, we're first going to start out with, uh, we'll, we'll be showing videos with all of these. Uh, the first one we're going to show is uh, a little video with Garrus and Omni. Let's take a look. Cool. Okay. I might I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be looking for. That looked like a normal as Garrus combo. And then that looked like a normal Omni Man combo. I don't I I don't know. Again, you can probably play back these videos if you want to see what happened. Uh but what happens there is for this one, uh Omni Man forward two, where he kind of dashes at you and punches, now gives you a little ground bounce. Now if you're in the corner, that's Oh, that is true. Okay, yeah. That did happen because normally when you do his back two, it's a hard knockdown. Okay, that, that okay, that that's cool. That's a buff. Awesome, because you can do a corner com right there. Corner com. But uh, if you, you can also use it for a cameo to help pick up the combo after the forward two. And Garrus's forward three now bounces, so you can uh, use the double time move, move where he makes a, a clone of himself to continue combos. Or okay, I'm, let me go back to that real quick. Sorry. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Because that, that's a normal starter. Uh. Uh. Oh, so his overhead kick bounces now? Okay, interesting. Uh, uh. Normal ender. Oh, that's so sick. Okay, they gave Omni Man a buff. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'll take that. I'll take that. Awesome, because you can do a corner com right there. Corner com. But uh, if you, you can also use it for a cameo to help pick up the combo after the forward two. And Garrus's forward three now bounces, so you can uh, use the double time move, move where he makes a uh, clone of himself to continue combos. Or you can use, again, a cameo to help out with that combo as well. What are we bouncing to next? We're going to bounce to Kung Lao. Oh, please don't they nerfed him. Oh, cameo come wow. Oh, 
that's so sick. They gave him the hat twirl. Okay, okay. They gave him orbiting hat. That's pretty sick. And it stuns too. Okay. Okay, low hat looked the same. Now has an orbiting hat. For duration, he'll put a hat around you. If the enemy is hit, they are stunned. So you can use this for protection, or hell, just throw out a random teleport oh, and see yeah. what happens, yeah, you know? That's how I roll. Uh, so that's a new thing for Cameo. Uh, okay, so they buff Cam, uh, Cameo Kung Lao. Nice. Works a little I thought, when they said Kung Lao, I was like, I hope they're not talking about main character, like, roster. It was, thank thankfully, it was Cameo. Oh shit. Let the real Kung Lao please stand up. What the hell? They gave him an aerial now? Oh, they made that faster. Okay. So they, they, they gave, why the fuck did they give Kung Lao a fucking aerial? Oh. This character is already a problem, all right? I will say he's not much of a problem as he was in MK11, but this he's a problem in MK1, man. He's definitely been under the radar for a long time now, in my opinion, man. Kung Lao's always been good in every game he's been in, so. But they, they gave him an air hat, and then they made his, uh, his spin faster, okay. And uh, the, the EX version of that is really good for combos. There's another tool for uh, Kung Lao to continue combos and kind of deal with people in the air. And you can also do it pretty low off the ground, too. So it can be used a lot of places throughout the screen. Uh, we have two more videos we're going to show you. The first one is awesome. Uh, a little bit of Shang and Shijinko buffs. Okay. So, well, we already know the Shijinko buffs. They, they're buffing Shang, though. Okay. Yeah, we already saw that for Shijinko. No fucking way! Okay, I'm already calling it now. That move he does, I think is, it has to be based on their cameo. It has to be based on their cameo. Because there's no way he could transform to Sonya like that whenever he wants. To be fair, he did do that in MK11 with the original ninjas. You know, Ermac lift, rain kick. Uh... Reptile slide. He had those. Maybe those are brand new moves, or it might be based on their character. I have no clue. Or on the uh, opponent's cameo. Because Shujinko does the same thing against Shang Tsung. He could take their... Uh, their cameo that you can use against them. But that's pretty sick. So, from that video, you're going to notice that Shujinko now has new combo strength. Hell yeah. A punch into a kick, which is a crumple stun, which allows you to do combos. He also has a kick into an overhead chop. So, some new moves for Shujinko to get in there. Uh, old Shang chop. So, some... Which Wait, what? Overhead chop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's sick. So you can get hard knockdown on people. Wonder how how safe that is on block. Okay. Where you can do a punch into a kick. Shujinko buffs, baby. Let's go. Let's go. With a kick into an overhead chop. So some new moves for Shujinko to get in there. Uh, old Shang. When you're when you're when you're playing as Old Shang, he has four three four, which is a double hitting low, a new strength. Stephanie, about I didn't see that. Moves. Well, showing that an old dog can learn new tricks. Ooh. There we go. Shang has a move where you do the input and he will morph into the opponent's cameo. Called it. I called it. I called it, man. We're two for two. Perform one of their moves. And so it's basically, you basically get Shujinko with, with Shang. You don't have to play Shujinko if you're using Shang. You you just are Shujinko now. Okay. And morph back. For example, 
if he's fighting someone using Cameo Sonia. He will morph into Sonia, do the leg grab, morph back. If someone's using Farah, Dude, that's actually an insane buff for Shang Tsung when you think about it. That's an insane buff for Shang Tsung, dude. Because it also depends on what moves he gets from the characters. Like, does he get Scorpion Spear? Or does he get Scorpion's, uh... What is it? His, uh... Death Spin. Who knows? I have yet to even play Shang, so I, I don't know. But I would like to test that out when it comes out. Or what happens? Do the little grab. Morph back. And all these attacks also have EX moves, which make them stronger. A lot of them are combo starters. They recover faster. For example, the leg grab will pop them up. And it's not randomized. If you're, you get the Correct. same one. You're not, you're not yes. guessing which cameo move you're morphing into. Right. That's Everyone super cool. The regular and EX versions of one of their cameo moves that he'll morph into. Right. <laughs> all I'm saying is if you're a Shijinko player, bro, play Shang. That's all I'm saying right now, because if you play Shujinko, it's basically, and you play Shang, it's basically using Shujinko, but without Shujinko, you know? You can use Shang and, like, Goro, and still, damn, using, like, Shang and Goro, but using your opponent's cameo, dude, that's like a three-on-one. That's insane. <laughs> we got one more video to show you. I know it's been a lot of videos. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, you've seen this one before. We want to talk about it real quick. This is, uh, let's see, Sonya's Dive Kick. Hell yeah. Oh, so that's a summon. Well, hold on. Oh, is that an overhead? It's an overhead pop up. All right, now Sonya has a dive kick. It's an overhead. It's a summon, so it won't like okay, summon, yeah. save you from mistakes. But it's really good for offense. A really good way to start a combo that starts overhead. And you'll also notice maybe for you eagle-eyed Takeda players, uh, forward two is now special cancelable. Sprinkle that in. Just sprinkle it in. Sprinkle it in. A little nugget. A little nugget. So, but I think it's time to, to move on to the next.